good morning everyone so in the continuation of the lecture series today we are having dr ankita uh let me introduce dr are ankita is currently working as a technical writer second at thermo fisher scientific usa dr ankita work in the dr reddish laboratory as well as a technical training coordinator for the last several years dr ankita work as a qa specialist in the sipla limited and she is having the multiple aspect of their professionalism so without wasting the time i would like to invite dr ankita uh, to share their screen and uh, start the presentation before switching the presentation i would like to invite our director sir dr gt gupta sir gd gupta sir sir please grace the session with your kind words so thank you very much dr nitin ji and uh, i am very very thankful to isf college of pharmacy to provide this opportunity on behalf of isf cp i welcome today's guest and uh, speaker dr ankita kapoor and uh, she is the very very dedicated and dynamic and uh, she have the both experience academia as well as the industry india as well as the abroad at present she is uh, in usa and uh, she did the lot of work on the ocular delivery system so i hope that this lecture it will be the helpful to the all people those who are connect or those who want to work on the ophthalmic delivery system so i hope everybody connect with this one and if you have any types of the inquiry you can send through our youtube channel so that we can connect with you to dr ankita ji as and when required and most of the queries we will try to complete within the time so now i request to experts as well as uh, dr nitin ji proceed please yes ankita ji please start thank you so much sir for um, giving me this opportunity today uh, i'll present my screen Uh, sir are you like is my screen visible to everyone uh, no, no ma'am sir uh, is presentation visible now yes uh, now okay good morning and good evening everyone uh, i am presenting today on head cam test for evaluation of ocular formulations ocular formulations um, are going to our very sensitive organ which is eye and eye is um like it has its own protective mechanisms present it has the layers like conjunctiva and cornea and uh, whenever like when we instill some eye drop in the eye or some foreign a little dust or a uh, microorganism something goes in the eye it has its own uh, protective mechanism by which it flush it down and we have tear secretions nasolacrimal drainage because of which the things go flush out of the eye so if or uh, i'll just show this this is the structure of the eye and this is conjunctiva which is the outer most outer lining of the eye uh, you can see here this is conjunctiva and followed by cornea so whenever uh, whether any ailment uh, is on the posterior segment of the eye or interior segment of the eye it is conjunctivitis uh, it is glaucoma uh, etc we formulate eye drops or eye ointments which are going and crossing these membranes and going to the eye most important study which is being done for the ocular formulation is irritancy test because if the um, formulation is irritant to our um, organ it will damage our eye which can lead to loss of vision for our patients so um, this is irritancy study traditionally draze eye test was being done which if everybody could remember it was using the rabbit and using the rabbit's eye to check the formulation this is just an alternative to draze eye test which is known as head cam test and 
Hedkem test for this um, irritation score is there by which it is being calculated. The formulation is irritant or it is non-irritant to the eye. So th this is being done at the development phase of the formulation. Uh, hemorrhage time, lysis time, and coagulation time. These are basically the vascular damage which occurs to our eye. I am just referring up here 0.9% sodium chloride which is generally taken as a negative control while performing this test. It is non-irritant. Developed formulation, here I've given a score non-irritant and I've shown some pictures ahead in the slides how this is the score is being given zero up here. Then if you'll see, um, we have 1% NOH, which is positive control. It means it should definitely cause irritancy. NOH is there, it will cause lysis, it will cause hemorrhage. Origin of head chem test. The original head chem test was developed by Lupic and has formed the basis for several modifications to a lot testing of materials with different physiochemical properties. Because when we are formulating um, our eye drop or ointment, along with our active pharmaceutical ingredient API, we have lots of excipients also there. So we need to check whether our formulation having excipients and API is uh, all of them should be non-irritant. So when we use our formulation, we are basically checking that those are compatible to the eye. Head chem test is already used within industry for identifying potential non-irritating and mildly irritating materials during in-house screening and for the safety evaluations of formulation. Because safety is must, we are doing everything for the patients who are suffering with the ailments. So this is the test which is related to safety of the formulation also. For irritancy studies, which I already added that this is alternative method to Dre's eye test, uh, HET stands for hen's egg test, or it is also known as Hulner embryogen test. HEDCHEM essay was evaluated by the expert panel of interagency coordinating committee on the validation of alternative methods and the national toxicology program interagency center for the evaluation of alternative toxicological methods. I'll go ahead with the procedure. Now I'll explain how it is being done. And since I have performed this, I would be like, will uh, worst with explaining this. Hence, a cam is taken 10 days after fertilization. Uh, from the hatchery, the freshly hatched hens, hens egg are being taken up. Those are like just uh, like 10 days old eggs. Then these eggs are being taken in an incubator, whatever laboratory conditions we have, and we simulate the conditions of the body temperature and humidity what a hen is having because what hen is doing hen is sitting over those eggs and hen is uh, moving over it that means the eggs get rotated so what we are doing we are simulating that with our hand so we rotate we give like half rotation like if in particular frequency in entire 24 hours for nine days and then after nine days, candling is being done. Candling is done in a dark room. Uh, the light is being passed through the eggs. And if we see a hard mass collected around the eggs, that are that is to be discarded. It means embryo is not formed. So what is this is uh, hence egg test or Hulner embryogenic test. It means we need an embryo formation not along the whole embryo or a whole living organism is formed there, but a layer, like uh, if human embryo is, a uh, human uh, womb is also there, a law, uh, outside every living organism before it comes to life, uh, but before it comes uh, in present, like there is a layer, there is a um, chorioallantoic membrane, there is a membrane which protects it. So that membrane is as sensitive as our eye is. So shell around the air cell is removed. And this is the procedure then. When we have good eggs with us, then the shell, two, uh, two centimeter by like width and length, both two centimeter is being taken. And then a small slit is being made, which is uh, through which you can see a whole complete allantoic membrane being formed there. 
and then formulation or positive or negative control are being added. They are added and they are left in contact for five minutes. And then basically we need to observe the time. Time to see the vascular damage, which uh, in the previous slide it was lysis, coagulation or hemorrhage. Then after having that time, the formula which was there, if I'll take you back to the previous slide. In this formula, that time, how much was the hemorrhage time, lysis time or coagulation time is being added to calculate these scores. And then it is classified, it is irritant or non-irritant. So I can show you some pictures up here. This is the slit which I was talking about. We make a small slit up here and then we can see, if you can see, this is the allantoic membrane. This is um, this is example of Devla formulation. I'll take you first through. Okay, it's good. Uh, this is the Devla formulation. So this was the Devla formulation. This is the initial zero time. When I opened up this slit, I can see the uh, allantoic membrane, the blood vessels there. Beneath this, embryo will form, but I have taken it at a stage when embryo is not formed, when only the outer structure is there, so that I am not provide, I am not uh, doing some harm to the living organism, which is being developed there, or I am hurting something. Then, in 0.5 minutes, it is being observed whether there is hemor hemorrhage, lysis, or coagulation. It was not there then two minutes and five minutes. So ba based upon this time, this time intervals, it is being observed if some vascular damage is there and then it is added up to the formula to calculate the score. Then I'll take you towards negative control and positive control. So negative control was 0.9% sodium chloride, which is isotonic. So it is isotonic, it is non-irritant. So this caused no harm up here. Then taking 1% sodium hydroxide, which is caustic, positive control, it should cause and it has caused. If you'll see the difference, you'll see the blood vessels. Uh, if you'll see, eggs look different because these are different eggs. So in some of the eggs, light blood vessels were there. And then another one, some dark blood vessels were there. So if you will see, on adding up sodium hydroxide, there was lysis. The blood vessel got burst. There was clotting. So we can say there was coagulation. There was hemorrhage. There was blood loss. So these were the different times. And here, proceeding through 0.5 minute, 2 minute, and in 5 minute, you can see how much blood is there. So this... That's why in our previous slide where you must might have seen the score was 11.57, it is irritant. It came up by having this time up there. So I'll take you towards regulatory for this. Like what is the, because for everything, for every study, we should have some regulatory guidelines. HEADCAM essay has been accepted already by British, French, Dutch, and German authorities for classification of several irritants. Within Europe, Independent validation studies were carried out by Koliba. Headcam test is included in worldwide ECHO validation studies. So these are already being validated. And so these can be used in our um, research or when, with the, when the formulation is being developed. In this case, rabbit, who is like full developed animal, and we have our animal ethics also. So we can avoid the damage because if we are testing it upon and if our formulation is irritant, it can cause harm to the rabbit's eye. So this can be used as an alternative in the research for different formulations which are being prepared for the eye to have their irritancy study. This was, uh, I've just referred one of the publication which I have with Dr. Chiti Gupta for head chem irritancy study for development of ketifloxus and in situ gel formulation in which the detail of the research and how it was carried on is given up there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ankita. Thank you, Dr. Ankita, for this uh, wonderful session, wonderful and even the eye-opening session because you provided all the techniques which are related to the alternative methods without harming much to the animal size directly. We can use these alternative methods uh, for various research and the data generated can be very, very useful for the students and even for the faculty member as well. So thank you very much once again, Ankita Madam. And I hope whatever the question will be raised by the, by the viewer through the YouTube, 
we would be in the condition to answer these question uh, through your response yes so amra ji uh, so i want to know what types of the pre question we take uh, during the experiment and what types of the difficulty you have feel uh the first thing is we need to approach some hatchery to have the freshly hatched freshly hatched eggs from there because they should not be old than 10 days um, they should not be like uh, i'm sorry uh, old than uh, they should be freshly hatched because we are taking them till only 10 days we are not taking them ahead of 10 days so when there is freshly hatched eggs we take them and during those 9 or 10 days egg can can get broken up very soon we need to have the care in handling of the eggs and then the condition in the incubator because we have to give it the actual condition we have to simulate the condition which hen is actually providing then only the development would be there if we are unable to give that humidity and temperature to the eggs so uh, basically we need something um, on which we can keep these eggs and we are able to give some gyration we are able to rotate them so that uh, we are simulating the actual physiological environment which they get when they are with the head then then only we are like we are proceeding them we are um, facilitating them to go towards the formation of embryo like we need only the outer membrane of the embryo formation not the complete embryo formed inside and then is candling that is also the main part of it because we should be able to see in the candling uh, if it is embryo is not formed you will see hard mass like a dark mass is there it means everything has accumulated on one side and embryo is because every uh, hen is laying up eggs but every egg is, every egg doesn't go towards embryo formation so that is one of the like checkpoint which has to be seen and then be careful with the sodium hydroxide because if it is irritant to the membrane for the study what we are doing it is irritant to us also so we should have all the personal protective equipments with us like gloves and mask and everything so that that caustic substance doesn't get spilled over the human body also so these are some of the precautions which should be taken up thank you thank you very much dr ankita thank you sir over to dr nitin ji right sir so uh, and apart from this question if the viewer through the youtube channel if they are having any question any queries they can write we would be uh, we would be try to give the answer through the ankita madam and definitely in the future we will be in the uh contact with ankita madam to give the answer of your questions so once again thank you very much dr ankita for this wonderful and eye opening session thank you very much thank you sir thank you and god bless you all the best thank you so much sir